Good evening, champion parents. Thank you for joining us this evening. What a blessing it is to have your heart and your ears at this time. We provide information and resources to inspire positive parental engagement. We want all mo parents, mothers and fathers, to recognize that there is a champion parent in all of us. Welcome to Mommy Talk. We want Welcome to Mommy Talk. We share information um, that increases knowledge in support of positive parental engagement that's real relatable and right on time. Come talk to us each and every Monday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. on 1340 a.m. and 96.7 FM WCHB. Also, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram, Instagram Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Mommy Talk Network. That's M-O-M-M-I-E. And check out our new and improved website at www.mommietalk.com. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to call us into us here at Mommy Talk at 313-837-1340. Again, that's 313-837-1340, where you can engage with us on the air. How was everybody's weekend? Good. Um, this is Dr. Perk. My weekend was um, really good. One of the things my daughter indicated to me was that she wanted us to start going to church. So I said, okay. Um, so I took my children to church. Oh, cool. And um, I remember when I was younger, my parents would um, take me to church. But the difference that I do with my children right now is I ask them, what was the lesson that you got out of it so I can gauge what was her interpretation of what was being communicated to her and uh, we talked about it and I think as a champion parent um, you in order to understand what your child is thinking you have to ask them questions well what did you get out of the message and we communicated about it and we enjoyed ourselves but we ate before we went to church though which yeah, we, uh, we actually went to the uh, original House of Pancakes, mm. Mm -hmm. and it was good. It is good. <laughs> yeah. What about you, uh, Miss Lisa? Uh, my weekend was uh, very good. Um, we actually did the opposite because we go to church every Sunday. However, this Sunday was one of those days, so we did not make it to church. And um, I actually ended up taking my daughter to urgent care. Parents, if you're listening, please monitor your children as they're trying to shave under their arms. So my daughter had uh, shaved a couple of weeks ago, gotten some real bad blisters um, under her arm, and um, had to get um, antibiotics and some type of uh, skin cream for infection. So, oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. So what I just noticed. She what does she use? Um, just a regular. Uh, oh, wow. She yeah, but you have to be careful with buying those cheaper razors. Uh -huh. Um you know, the one, because there are some that have the, the uh, padding, um, and the other ones, like the razor, seem to uh, stick out a little bit more. So you have to be careful mm -hmm. when you buy those. Um, and I can't remember the difference between the name of the two. Um, but anyway, using the cheaper version. Y'all um, must have got the 50 cent brand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where we got these razors from. I think they were like in a pack or something. Um, I don't know if we, they were given to us, but normally we'll get the type that has like the little padding on the uh, the razors. Right. April looking she, crazy because she probably you do you get your you wax on your arms? <laughs> no, that's not. What I'm really concerned. Like, yeah, 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 no, yeah. no, no, no. That's when I'm looking yeah. like wow, like. So you said she was holding her arms funny, so that's how she you figure it out? She was kind of walking funny. Um, she mm -hmm. told me a couple of weeks, a couple of days ago, um, but it happened actually a couple of weeks and ago. And when so she raised her arm, you can see the you scar? You can see it. Oh, you, wow. It's not a scar. It's a, like a blister. It was a, a bump. So the doctor was saying that one of the, uh, you could tell one of the uh, blisters were at a head. And, well, not mm. blister. I may be saying the wrong thing. But uh, one of them was kind of like at a head where you know that you can bust it like a pimple. You know, ev eventually, he was saying, don't poke at it, just give it time yeah. and, you know. Poor let Layla. It, um, yeah. She's probably trying to shave on her arm so she can look kind of cute. And then whatever. she dances. Yeah, so, yeah, know, yeah. You, know. yeah. you don't want all that hair poking out, so I can understand that. So the other thing, though, that she was using was the nair. I don't like nair at all because it's, it has a really strong smell. Uh, you don't think nair? that may be safer? 
I don't like it because I can tell when she uses it. I smell it. Am, am I talking about neat or near? Near, probably. Near, near. near. It is. But near may be near. better, though. I, I think it than depends razor. on your skin type because yeah. it's so strong. That's what I think, too. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. so strong. It can, and with her being so young, you know, uh, we and have to skin. be careful yeah, monitor right. the type of products that they use. But other than that, um, <laughs> Look, back to the question. Um, my weekend was good. We had a concert last night, and um, I'm very proud. You know, uh, Black Catholic Ministries really did a great job. So That's good. Well, this weekend was my illustrious Norfolk State University homecoming, which I was so happy to attend. It's my second year attending in a row with my sons, and I was able to see some of my family, my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law, and his wife, and then I also had a chance to visit my campus, and it just has grown so tremendously and changed because of the new things that are on campus, and I just really enjoyed myself at Norfolk State. Nice. Behold the green and gold. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Mm -hmm. um, that's just listening to both of you all, <laughs> you all display what a champion parent is because I know, Miss Lisa, you said that you were paying attention to your daughter, and that's something that a champion parent does. They address the needs and concerns even yeah, with your children. That's, that's really rough. Don't yeah. mention what's going on. And because they probably don't know. Like, Layla probably didn't realize it. Yeah. Well, yeah, because she didn't tell me. Like, yeah. I could see how the average parents would overlook it because mm -hmm. um, she was shaving a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. She actually brought it to my attention a couple of days ago. Then I noticed, like, she was mm -hmm. kind of holding her arms on. I'm like, uh... We need to go to urgent care. Yeah, but as a champion parent, you listen to your children, you address their needs and their concerns. And then one of the things that Miss April has done as a champion parent is that she spent time with her children. She traveled with them. Let yeah. me tell you, what they hate in sales, I hope that the Caleb <laughs> listening, because they, they are talking about, oh, Michigan State, you know, because they go to Michigan State, so they're mm -hmm. always making comparison between Michigan State and Norfolk State. But it was still a fun time. We had a good, great time, and I'm sure they enjoyed the experience. Um, on campus, yeah. So yeah, um, and just like you, um, Doctor Pert, you actually listened to your children. Y'all went to breakfast. Yeah, y'all sure, went. Sure. Yeah, and enjoyed you know our service, and you allowed them to interpret how they would apply the message to their lives. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so did you know overreacting to negative behavior causes children to withdraw? We must watch that wow factor. Create a safe space for children to confide in you. No one is immune to becoming addicted to substance and participating in substance abuse. Today, our children are at risk for many substances because, unfortunately, so much is accessible. If they don't already know, there are ways to find out. The curses of social media and technologies is just a click away. If you suspect that your child may be participating in substance abuse, please make them a doctor's appointment. Express these concerns with your healthcare professional. That's interesting. So I have a question based on that. What would you all do if you found out that your child was smoking marijuana? Well, I would sit and have a conversation with Seth or Caleb and just ask them. You know, we would just discuss what make them um, get to the point where they felt they need marijuana. Right. And then, of course, you know, I would try to get them some help because I don't want my sons or, or any, I don't want any child using marijuana as recreational. Right. Now, some kids are prescribed it. Like I had a student, he had um, I didn't know that. cerebral palsy or not cerebral palsy, but maybe um, it was some type of disease. I have to look it up. But he was prescribed um, marijuana. Wow. But I think he used oh, I think he overused it, though. I think he more so wasn't responsible, and he kind of used it as a go-to. Did but he it, say that, or did you, like... No, his mom sure? told me. Okay. Yeah, his mom told okay. me. Yeah. But wow. I can just tell he was always high. So I was like, I'm sure um, that diagnosis didn't cause you to be high all the time. Right. But I, I would just have a conversation with them and make them seek help, because it's, I, don't, I think that it's maybe something lacking or something they're using as a crutch to escape. Yeah. 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 Depending on what age my child um, is doing marijuana, it depend. It will dictate the type of questions I would ask. Mm -hmm. But um, at a young age, I would ask them, "Well, who introduced you 
Where did you get it from? Why are you doing it? When are you doing it? And who are you doing it with? That would be my first uh, questions if my child was doing it at a young age. Hmm. And so we have a caller. Hi, caller. Welcome to Mommy Talk. Hey, yeah. This is Caleb. I was listening in. <laughs> hey, Caleb. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Good. fine. How are you? It looked like you enjoyed yourself over the weekend. Oh, yeah, I, I did. I did. I enjoyed myself. It's a different experience, you know. Okay, cool, yeah, cool. Well, I I want to. I just wanted to give a shout out to you guys and keep doing what you guys are doing. Oh, well, we appreciate that. you for taking your time out of your busy schedule. I'm sure you're studying, uh, getting ready to be on the dean's list, right? Yeah, uh, I was actually studying for my ISP exam. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. good. Cool, cool. That's good. Yeah, congratulations well, in advance. Yes, yes, you'll do well. And we need to Thanks. see that dean's list. That what is it? Three point five. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And thank you for taking your time out of your studies to call us here on Mommy Talk. We definitely appreciate you. All right. Okay. Have a good one. You too. You too. Thank you. I'm surprised you didn't say nothing else. But so I yeah. think um, if I found out that my uh, child was smoking uh, marijuana, it's interesting because that's why I always say watch that wow factor because I know. My reaction probably would be, oh, my God. Like, I'm listening to your questions um, that you say you would ask Dr. Pert. And um, and there's nothing wrong with the questions, but it does matter how, you know, how you address, you know, your child, whether they feel like, uh, oh, it would depend on how you ask them, and it would determine how they decide to open up and answer. But with me, I know when I think of my... <laughs> <laughs> my Layla, and and think of her, you know, uh, possibly smoking. I think my first reaction would be like, "Oh my God, what are you doing?" You know, same thing. Where'd you get it from? Who'd you get it from? You know, so I I definitely, you know, yeah. agree with the conversation piece, uh, but also just to watch that wild factor. Yeah, I don't think for me it would be such a wild factor. Um, when it comes to that, it would just be, I would just really want to know where are you getting it from? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you're feeling pressure to do it or because it's really you? You're curious. You're interested. And then after, how do you really feel? You know, though, for so for me, um, it just really wouldn't be that wow factor. And then I'll be honest with you all. Um, my daughter saw me take um, a marijuana uh, cookie. What kind of cookie was it? Uh, it was a red velvet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, I heard um, those are really poor, potent. Yeah, they, yeah, they really are. And I think, uh, and this was a while back. And when I think my reaction to it, it really scared her. And so, because she asked me after, like, well, why did you do that? And I thought to myself, yeah, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. And um, it was not, and the way she looked at me with such disappointment, it made me feel like, you know what, I'm not being the type of role model that I, I should be for my child. Absolutely. And so I think that incident scared her so much that she wouldn't even want to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I think that that actually goes to the uh, the topic for today. Uh, does marijuana usage um, lead to uh, psychosis? And we know uh, part of or one of the traits of of psychosis is actually just the act of being paranoid. Um, and that brings me back to uh, my college days when I partake partook. Or what? Yes, get it straight. Get it straight. <laughs> when I uh, when I smoked marijuana, mm -hmm. and I actually stopped because I would be it would make me paranoid, mm -hmm. and I couldn't understand how uh, some people their reactions they were just cool, calm, and collected, and then I just always felt like somebody was after me, or mm -hmm. it was a weird feeling. So I know that uh, definitely it's something that does not mix with uh, my being 
Yeah, I think that with any drug that you do, you have to be responsible. And then also you have to think, how does that drug affect your body? Because people respond differently to drugs. So like one person could possibly use marijuana and it doesn't make them paranoid. It actually makes them chill focus but then you have another person over here and it actually makes them paranoid and makes them feel like somebody is after them or it, it could be this person over here where it affects their um, physical mm -hmm. where they feel like they're having a reactive airway to it mm -hmm. meaning like having an asthma attack mm -hmm. so I think whatever drug anybody is using, you have to use it responsibly and you have to think about how it affects your body type. Because we can sit up here all day long and say, you know, well, marijuana is not good for this reason, but then you will have those who do marijuana and say, well, it's good for this reason. Absolutely. Which is probably the reason why, you know, uh, the talks are... Um, present, you know, um, with marijuana being legalized, well, medical uh, marijuana. Wait, is it med all medicinal marijuana or what? what's legal? All of it's it. It's just a medicinal. Right. Okay. I mean, yeah, oh, for medical reasons, yes. Yeah, for medical reasons. And I was looking up, um, my student, he had um, multiple sclerosis. Okay. And he used marijuana to help alleviate some. I guess it was, it was, it was painful for him. Mm -hmm. So I think he used marijuana to help with the aches and pain. I'm wondering how he's doing now and everything. Um, but, yeah, that's what he used it for. But, yeah, mar medical marijuana is um, definitely legal. You have to have a prescription by a doctor. And um, I don't know, is recreational marijuana? I think it's in small quantities, though. Yeah. Um, so studies have shown that marijuana has had several negative effects uh, relating to mental health issues. Studies have also shown that marijuana has had positive effects, as you said, Dr. Pert and um, Ms. April. Um, it had positive effects on medical conditions such as cancer, glaucoma, ALS, HIV, AIDS, Crohn's disease, uh, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, as Ms. April uh, mentioned her student, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, Parkinson's disease, and there's just a list of other, uh, I mean, we can go on and on, but there's uh, many uh, conditions that medical marijuana is supposed to help or is supposed to be good for. So we talk about uh, psychosis. What is, what is psychosis? So psychosis is a severe mental disorder in which thought and emotions are so impaired that contact is lost with external reality. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that doesn't happen in every case, but it, it can. It doesn't, yeah. So it's funny. I um I was trying to get to my Facebook post. <laughs> I put this as a Facebook post like two weeks ago. And um, the reactions or responses that I got uh, from uh, this post was actually kind of hilarious. Um, there were some, of course, some serious uh, responses. And then there were some, you know, What was outrageous. the question you posed? Um, does uh, mar this, our topic uh, basically does marijuana usage uh, lead to psychosis? Mm -hmm. and, it can. Uh, yeah, yeah. It can. It cannot. Like like Dr. Park was saying, this depends on your it body on type individual. and your yeah, individual. But sometimes it can. Let me tell you. So I had a cousin. His name was um. He's he's now deceased. It's for a different reason, but he um smoked marijuana. And he was in high school, and then at a point, I think it became he got it laced with something, or something was mixed mm -hmm. with the marijuana, and he just wasn't right since. Like, yeah. I mean, it was just like a total reversal of his personality. So um, he ended up having to, um, I think he was diagnosed with some disorder or something. Um, but yeah, that just leads back to the question. It does some. This depends. It does cause psychosis just depending on how it mixes with your body yep and I'm sure we all can relate or have a story uh, there is a, a young man that um, I knew from my god sister and um, he had a promising football career 
And um, I don't know if it was right before he was getting ready to uh, leave to go off to school, but he was out with some people. And same thing, you know, um, they feel like he probably got a hold of some bad or laced um, stuff. And, you know, uh, what we need, mean by laced is uh, just putting uh, extra or added um, chemicals of some sort um, in the marijuana and he smoked it and just has not been right ever since. And it's weird because uh, when we see him, he's such a, he's still a, he's a gentle giant. Um, this guy is probably six foot seven, uh, probably over 300 pounds. Um, I never was afraid to be around him, but you could tell that when you talk or have conversations with him that uh, something isn't right. Yeah, you got a conversation with a, a somebody who don't do that. Yeah, and some may not be right. <laughs> <laughs> tell the truth. Uh, tell the truth. Tell the truth. So, what is marijuana? Um, so, you have recreational marijuana, as we uh, discussed. We have uh, recreational marijuana and marijuana, uh, which is marijuana that does not have any medical justification. It contains a high volume of THC, which is here I go, y'all. Tetradrocannabinol. I know, right? <laughs> they ready to get me. Okay, so it is tetra hydro cannabinol. <laughs> Dang, can I finish? She hate y'all. She won't even let me try. <laughs> so uh, anyway, let's let's just stick with THC. So it has yeah, a high volume right. of THC <laughs> in it, and we'll get back to that because we do have a caller. Hey, caller, welcome to Mommy Talk. Hello. Hey, hey. Hey, how are you? How y'all you? doing? Good. How are you? Good. This is Miss Dorsey. Just wanted to tell you all that you all are doing an awesome job, and this is a good topic that you all have. How do you feel about Thank marijuana? You. I do not like it, and I will not smoke it. What if you were had to have it for medical reasons? That's what um, some of the ladies here, you know, because I'd be in like, severe pain and stuff, and they would tell me, and I'm like, no. I just use, use my little muscle relaxers, and that's it. But what if somebody else needed it for med medical, med I mean, uh, for their condition, and that was the only thing that they had to use? Would you support them? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would have to pray about it. Okay. That's understandable. And that's honest. Mm -hmm. That's honest. That okay, ladies. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you for calling Thanks in, for Champion calling. Parent. Okay. Champion Parent. Yes. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, so we know that both uh, medicinal and recreational cannabis is from the cannabis plant. However, uh, medical is uh, medical marijuana is apparently uh, treated with uh, medical uh, justifications. Um, medical marijuana, I guess, what makes it treated is it has the CBD oil. Have you guys been hearing people? Um, that selling, there's a lot of people that's going around selling the CBD oil, which yeah. is not marijuana. I heard about that, like with CBD infused products, like for your skin and makeup. I heard it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be good for your health, your uh, immune system. I should have had um, Angela call in today because she, she sells the CBD oil. I've never bought it or mm -hmm. purchased it. Um, but there's a lot of people, like if you look it up, even if you look, if you go on Facebook, I guarantee you, you I guarantee to you about 10 of your friends selling CBD oil. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, like with anything uh, that you buy or purchase, um, an experiment where you have to see how your body responds to uh, whatever you're buying, hmm. whatever product it is. So I just think that, you know, regardless if you are uh, using marijuana or that you find out that your child is using it, you have to tell them what it means as far as being legal because it can be legal uh within the state, yeah. but is it legal federally? Right. So there are states where recreation, Recreational marijuana can be purchased by anyone 21 years or older with a valid, you know, driver's license or state ID. And in 2018, voters voted to legalize uh, marijuana in Michigan up to 2.5 ounces. And that may be purchased uh, by, you know, someone who's of age or 71 grams, uh, you know, to grow up to 12 plants. 
Mm -hmm. And that was uh, established by the Marijuana Regulatory Agency. Um, (laughs) So, (laughs) what's so funny? I'm laughing because this is a serious conversation. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm I'm just in a silly mood. Oh, okay. It's she was laughing because you said regulatory. <laughs> That's what she <laughs> laughing at. <laughs> you know what? Listen, I keep trying to tell y'all. Sometimes I mispronounce my words. I make no apologies about it. And if you hear me, just call me out. I on didn't it. say that. That was Miss April. You know, if, if you hear me pronounce mispronounce a word, call me out of, on it, and then so I could correct myself. <laughs> So regulatory. <laughs> <laughs> so as governing state laws uh, spare marijuana with an H, uh, BMR legal communication and references to statuses in relation to the Michigan Mer- Medical Marijuana Act or the Michigan Medical Facilities Licensing Act or the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act and the court... Okay, what is all of this? <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just, you know what? The, the so body- we basically, I mean, that's just, I mean, you know, viewers can just go and read all that stuff up, you know, read all of that, you know, themselves. But um, that's just basically the laws and, you know. Yeah, but the- one of the things I do want to uh, inform everybody, it may be legal within the state. However, you know, federally is not legal. So Mm -hmm. there are, uh, if you do marijuana and you're trying to get a job that takes federal monies, then they will do a drug test. They can, it's up to them. Yeah. Yeah, So, you know, although it may be legalized, still it it can prevent somebody from getting a job. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the considerations that you have to uh, think about. Okay. And I'm not going to say I'm for it or against it. I'm just going to say whatever people are doing out there, you just have to be responsible. And if you find out that their children are doing it, make sure you ask the right questions and, you know, consider how you approach the situation, approach it with sensitivity. Because I would rather know if my child is doing something rather than doing it behind my back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I think that's very important. Because when I was in college... I made my parents aware because I wanted to let them know, like, this is what I'm doing just in case, you know, you find out, like, oh, I never knew that she was doing that. No, you need to know what I'm doing just in case you ever get a phone call, you know, you know what to say. Like, yes, I do know that my child is doing this. And I think that's one of the things that we have to build trust and communication and relationships with our children so that they would want to tell us what they're doing. Absolutely. And that would definitely, you know, like I said, I speak about the wow factor all the time, but being that I want my children to feel comfortable enough to talk uh, to me. I always think about the movie, Bring It Down the House, and I'm not going to, I've already, you know, talked about it before. But um, anyway, just, it helps me to stay calm because I, again, I want to build that trust. I want my kids to feel comfortable enough to come to me because uh, my daughter said once to me, like, um, that's why I don't tell you anything. And I'm like, okay, that was kind of my wake up call to kind of watch my reactions. To when she, you know, has uh, something to share. That's true. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Mommy Talk Live. Remember to check us out on our new and improved website. And we are gaining momentum. We're gaining more followers. Um, You know, just really stay tuned because we got some uh, good and exciting uh, events that we plan on hosting for all the parents out there. Because remember, our goal is to inform parents on how they can uh, be a champion at parenting. Yep. Because we love the kids. We love the kids. All right. Thank you for listening to Mommy Talk, the champions of parenting. And remember, you too can be a champion of parenting. Continue to support and love your children. For additional information, you can contact us at info at mommytalk.com or visit our website at www.mommytalk.com. We can also be found via social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. 
at Mommy Talk Network. Please listen to us every Monday at 7.30 p.m. on WCHB Detroit's Gospel Station. Come talk to us!